Hey everyone, this is Julia with episode number 86 of the Mixology Talk podcast. It's been a few months and the questions are starting to stack up. Chris and I thought we'd take today's episode to catch up a little bit on all the questions that we've received recently. If you have questions of your own, we'd love to hear them. Head on over to mixologytalk.com slash 86, scroll down, and click on the button that says click here to send us your cocktail and mixology questions. Alrighty, let's get into it. This question is from Mario from Fort Carson, Colorado, and he asks, I'm planning a party and I want it to be a crowd pleaser. Trying to keep from going broke, I'm wanting to stick with my wife's and my favorite drinks, which are margaritas for her and old fashions for me. I plan to also make Manhattans and lime daiquiris. We're expecting about 10 to 15 people, and I was wondering some other drink choices that I might be able to make with the ingredients that I'll already have for those cocktails. I'm definitely not a professional and hardly an enthusiast, more of a beginner on the fast track. I appreciate that, Mario. Thanks for your time and any help you can give. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Love your show. Thanks so much, Mario. That's very kind of you. I think you're on. You're definitely on a good start with Manhattans, lime daiquiris, margaritas, and old fashions. You've got a lot to play with. Yeah, no, you got some great ingredients and really good choices in cocktails. It's, I gotta say, it's like a hit list of good cocktails. I know right you there. Cover, I mean, do you need to make anything else? I know. Well, if I mean, that's pretty much covering most of the bases. I'd for like me. to order a margarita, please. <laughs> <I know>. Oh, <laughs> done. But this is a really good question, and I think there's a couple different directions that you can go. First of all, you could invest in some of the mixers. So club soda, uh, tonic water, you know, ginger beer would be a really good addition to the list that you have here because it's so flexible. You can use it on so many different cocktails. So you could kind of swing the other direction and, and invest a little bit more money in your mixers, still being able to provide a ton of options and uh, stay under the, your budget. Right, because mixers are going to be so much less expensive. You know, if you end up throwing away half a bottle of soda water, I think that that's probably going to be okay. Yeah, and the other thing you could do is really start to get into um, syrup production. So making some fun flavored syrups that you can add into your repertoire. <laughs> that was terrible. I apologize. I, I don't know why I had I to have, go like super bougie on that one. I have no words. But yeah, so you can add that into your portfolio and really expand kind of some of the things that you can make in in this setting. So something as simple as, you know, an orange syrup or any kind of a berry syrup, putting this in there, all of a sudden you have a really fun margarita. You have a really cool, you know, flavored daiquiri. Uh, you could do a flavored whiskey sour if you have lemon juice. You know, you can really start to have a little bit of fun without going too far uh, from where you're already at. Another thing that you can do is you've got two great whiskey cocktails with the Manhattan and the Old Fashioned, and you mentioned that you're going to have rum for your daiquiri. And I don't know about you, but uh, I like rum. You may not know this about me. It's uh, growing on it, me. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. I'm still working on it. But one thing I've found and that Chris has done for me is to just swap out the whiskey for rum. And if you've got a, a rum that's seen a little bit of time in a barrel, you'd be surprised. It is a fantastic cocktail. So you can make a rum Manhattan or a rum old fashioned by following just the old recipe and swapping out the whiskey. You're going to be in good shape. Yeah. And they're really fantastic cocktails. Once again, you can really have some fun. You know, for seven bucks, you could have a different flavored beer bitters and it's a whole different cocktail at that point you know add a little bit of chocolate bitters in there or something and now we're talking off to the races <laughs> one of the other things that you have there which is kind of an unsung hero in your um your lineup there is vermouth so if you have a really good sweet vermouth or even a decent sweet vermouth vermouth and soda is a really refreshing drink highly underrated if you ask me yeah so um that could be something that you add to your lineup this could be something to kind of get the party started a nice little appetizer <laughs> in cocktail form a mousse bouche a mousse bouche yeah to get started low alcohol content so you're not going to worry about getting people crazy wasted and really interesting because vermouth provides a lot of flavor and it's not going to be the kind of thing that most folks are used to ordering so it'll be seem a little bit more i think craft right exactly but you have a lot of really good things in there. You know, substitution is a good one, even with the tequila, uh, tequila old fashioned, depending on how much it's been aged, can be a really good addition here as well. And I think those are some really good starting points. The one thing I would say is uh, there's a website that I like to refer people to called cocktailbuilder.com. Uh, we have no affiliation with them. I just think that they do a really good job. You, what you do is you just type in the ingredients you have, and it'll spit out some recipes that you can make with those ingredients. I admittedly, it's not always the most craft or classic recipes, but it is a really, really good start. Yeah, absolutely. So 
there's a couple uh, the great website and uh, let us know what you come up with for your next party. And I'm a little bummed we didn't get our invitation. I know. And yeah. I, here I am w- looking for a rum Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for the great question. So this next question comes from uh, Cornelio from India. And he wants to know, or they want to know, what kind of woods can you use for smoked cocktails? It's a good question. And I guess my my first thought would be something like oak. I mean, oak finds its way into a lot of spirits uh, in a lot of ways. But really, probably any sort of wood that you use in a barbecue would probably be fine, right? I would think so, yeah. You you could look at um, oak, walnut, pecan, applewood. As Julie mentioned, anything that you're utilizing in cooking definitely could use in cocktails as well. I wouldn't go too far outside of that spectrum because once you get into some really obscure woods, there can be some pretty bad toxins in the wood from my understanding, just from the research that I've done in woodworking and stuff with cutting boards, one of my hobbies on the side, you really have to be careful of the woods that you get because some of them can can hold toxins and aren't food safe. And along that note, you're also going to want to avoid any kind of uh, any woods that have have been treated. So for example, if it's been stained or painted, or if it's been treated for rot or anything like that, don't just go in your backyard and grab a piece of wood and assume it's going to be fine. Because especially when you add fire, it can really release these sorts of chemicals. And you know, at best, your your drink is probably going to taste awful. At worst, you could be looking at a health hazard. Yeah. So just as long as you get your wood from a nice rep, Reputable source. Don't get it off the shelf of a department store. You know, especially any kind of treated products, as Julia says. Just get it from a really good source. It from yes, yeah, so source it from somewhere that that is going to tell you that it's food safe. Right. I think that's going to be your key because if you just go to the the local hardware store, they have no reason to tell you if it's food safe or not, and and they certainly don't know that you're going to be using it for something for consumption. Right. So hopefully we answered your question and uh, let us know how that turns out. This one comes from Greg from the Sierra Mountains in California. How do you handle it when you're in a bar and the bartender has no idea how to make a cocktail? I'm amazed at how often I have to ask for a Manhattan stirred because too many bartenders seem to shake every drink. I recently asked for a Manhattan stirred and here's what the bartender did. She put ice in a martini glass with water to pre-chill it. Then she built my drink in an old-fashioned glass, added no ice at all, stirred it with a cocktail straw, dumped out the ice from a chilled glass, and poured the room-temperature Manhattan into the chilled glass. This is not the first time I've been in a bar where they had no idea that cocktails are stirred, nor do they know what a bar spoon looks like. Do I teach her how to stir a cocktail, which I have done at other bars? Do I just drink it, go home, and never go back? Or is there a middle way? Seriously, I'm amazed at how few working bartenders seem to have any idea how to mix a drink. So this is a really great question from many different angles. First of all, Greg, I feel your pain. I used to be one of those bartenders too. I'm going to go ahead and fully admit that. One of the things that I remember vividly is when people would ask me for a rum and Coke, I had no idea what type of rum to put in. Was it white rum? Was it golden rum? Was it dark rum? So I basically just kind of kept going until somebody stopped me and said, hey, actually, the way that you do it is this. Um, Most of the time, nobody would. And everybody starts somewhere. Right, exactly. So I can I can see the frustration on both sides, but this is kind of a really delicate balancing act on um, as far as what to do. My advice has always been, you know, if you walk into a bar you don't know what to order, order a beer, you know, or order something that's bulletproof safe that you know you're it's not going to have any opportunity to go wrong. You can take your cues from what other folks are ordering as well. I think, you know, you can look around and get a sense for whether this place is a cocktail bar or not. Right. And I I understand that you walk into a bar and you have kind of this desire for a really good cocktail. That being said, you know, if you walk in, you see a bunch of beers and shots on the bar, it's probably not going to be the place where you're going to get a really great Manhattan, potentially. But you're you're taking a risk by by going out there and asking for that cocktail there. I think by trying to educate the bartender, you run the risk of being insulting, though, right? It could. I mean, you really you have to really kind of gauge the relationship, and it's it's on a case by case scenario. Sometimes it'll be great. Sometimes it's going to backfire. It really depends on a lot of things. But my my advice always is just figure out the bar, know what they're good at. And just kind of put that in your back pocket. Like, this is a beer and shop bar. This is someplace I'm going to go watch sports and order pizza and wings. Or this is a bar I'm going to go 
I'm going to spend a little bit more money on this cocktail, mm-hmm. but I know it's going to be exactly what I ordered. And that's one of the reasons why craft cocktails tend to be a little bit more expensive. They're highly educated bartenders. They take their craft very, very seriously. There's a lot of training that happens behind the scenes that consumers will never see, but they always benefit from. So there's a lot of reasons why going to the right bar, a good craft bar, is good. It's good. Yeah, it gives you the option. Now, let's for the sake of, of argument, though, let's say that, that Greg has a neighborhood bar that is, is local and he loves to go there and he just really wants to order a Manhattan. Like, what do you think? Can he start to build a relationship as a regular and eventually work his way into, you know, showing him how to make oh, his absolutely. drink? absolutely. Like, once you're a regular for me, whatever you ask for, I'm going to go out of my way to do because I know you're going to be coming back over and over and over again. And you probably have a rapport and a relationship and, and it's going to be clear that you're not just being a jerk. Right, exactly. You, you have this background understanding of each other and then you can start to work your way into that and say, hey, by the way, like some my regulars in the past like there's half bourbon half rye manhattans and that's cool i totally did it for them because they were my regulars i knew them i knew they weren't kind of being a pain in the ass part of my french but that's just the way they prefer their cocktails and there may be a way to do that really well but if you walk into a random bar everybody's drinking beer and you sit down and start to try to educate the bartender on how to make a craft cocktail i just don't see it going well yeah and it, it could go really badly you run the risk of damaging the relationship and if you if you want to stick around to this bar and come back that might be uh that might not be the best strategy right exactly so i like your recommendation build that relationship first have a couple of beers, have a couple of shots. Maybe vodka soda. Buy that's the a bartender nice, safe a drink, one. you know, if that's permissible. And then, you know, a couple of visits later, say, hey, you know, I, I really, I saw this really good video on Manhattans the other day. I'm really trying, I want to try it this way. Would you mind making it for me? Have them like pass your phone across the bar, let them watch the video, and then you're off to the races. That's a good idea. I like yeah, that. So I like you, that. You just kind of, I guess, it's at delicate. The end of the day, you got to kind of be tactful, feel out the scenario, and bite the bullet and. If it's worth the uh, the investment, then figure out a really creative way or a good way to make it happen. Yeah, I hope it works. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you, Greg. And uh, hopefully this helps other people because I know we actually get this form of question quite a bit. We do. And, and it is hard because I think, you know, everybody has a first day. Right. And everybody wants their drink in a very different way. One person's Manhattan is not going to be the same as another person's. Absolutely. One person's best Manhattan ever is somebody else's worst. Right. Exactly. But this is a great question. And if any of you listeners out there have experience with this and have done this well, or bartenders, how would you like this scenario presented to you? Uh, We'd love to hear back from you. And uh, we'll feature that hopefully in a follow up episode. And Absolutely, yeah. Let us know advice. your thoughts in the show notes. I'd love to get your uh, I'd love to get, love to get your perspective. Thank you so much, Mario, Cornelio, and Greg for sending in your questions. I hope your party goes well, your smoked cocktails come out delicious, and you have a better experience the next time with the bartenders in your hometown. As I mentioned in the intro, definitely send us your questions. We love hearing from you. It's so great to hear the kind of things that you're struggling with, and it can help us do a better job with the podcast. So again, click on the button on our show notes page at mixologytalk.com slash 86, or you can also email us directly at questions at mixologytalk.com. I hope to hear from you soon, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers! Never miss an episode by subscribing in iTunes or YouTube. And as always, check out the show notes by clicking on the right.